What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and you guys asked for it. I did it. You know what? Your boy went to Goodwill, got himself a lighting setup, and it's it's pretty much night and day. I would say I was looking at my uh, most recent YouTube video and compared it to this. And as far as the lighting goes, I mean, geez, this shit is like night and day. It looks so much better. And uh, we sprayed some uh, Windex on the camera, so even the camera quality is a little better as well. Uh, the microphone still needs a little work, so uh, make sure you go to GoFundMe slash Talks if you want your boy to get a new microphone. I'm just kidding. I don't have a GoFundMe. But your boy is getting some better equipment day by day. But anyway, today we are here with a new video for you guys, and I wanted to have a little fun. So the season is starting off now in a little over a month. I'm really, really excited, and hopefully with all that's going on, the season does play out and goes to a complete end. But today, I wanted to have a little fun, not talk about position outlooks, not talk about the season ahead, but kind of talk about players past talk about some of the Jacksonville Jaguar players that made your boy fall in love with the Jacksonville Jaguars I also want to know some of the players that made you fall in love with the Jacksonville Jaguars I want to know your favorite Jaguar players in the comment section down below and if you are watching this live in the premiere I'm going to be in the premiere with you responding to each and every one of you and if you leave your top 10 players in the comment section I will also be responding to those as well now a uh, a notice before we dive in to my top 10 uh, favorite players in Jacksonville Jaguar history I just want to note that I started watching the Jaguars play in about 2007 2006 so I did not want to put guys like Keenan McCardell, Jimmy Smith, Mark Brunel, Fred Taylor on there because though I did watch highlights of them play and I watched like the tail end of Fred Taylor's career, I didn't think it was fair for me to put those guys on this list because I didn't get really the experience of watching them play during my fanhood. You guys as viewers might have had that experience, but I myself did not. So unfortunately, you will not be seeing those guys on my top 10 list. Spoiler alert, but you will see some current players, you will see some obscure players, and you will see some players that will go, oh my god, Treep, I cannot believe you put them in your top 10. But anyway, these are the 10 players that made me fall in love with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Number 10, Cecil Shorts. I told you you're going to see some obscure players and some players you're like, what in the hell? And again, that's why I did the notice at the beginning because you're not going to see Jimmy Smith on there. And you're like, oh my god, I could already see the comment section going off if I didn't give you that notice in the beginning. But Cecil Shorts was the first Jacksonville Jaguars wide receiver that I fell in love with. Cecil Shorts was really the main guy in the era of the Chad Henney, Blaine Gabbert quarterback scenario, probably the worst quarterback situation maybe in NFL history. I did see a thing on Twitter uh, where I believe it was Bucky, Bucky Breakdowns, is that his name? Uh, Becky, uh, something like that. The guy that, you know, does a lot of film breakdowns uh, on Twitter, and he broke down Maurice Jones-Drew's uh, rushing title. And, you know, it really, you know, goes back to show you how bad that quarterback situation really was. And that was, you know, the same era that the Jaguars drafted a guy by the name of Justin Blackman. And Cecil Shorts was a guy that nobody thought was anything. You know, no one thought that this guy could be a elite wide receiver, and he never really was. But he was a guy that made a lot of big plays for two quarterbacks that were not, you know, great quarterbacks. You know, one of my fondest memories of the Jacksonville Jaguars was back in the day when, you know, me and Fitz didn't have direct TV, didn't really even have cable TV, so we couldn't watch the Cardinals and we couldn't watch the Jags on TV because we live in Idaho and those were two teams that you never got on uh, national TV here in Idaho, so we had to stream it and we literally had to scour the internet to find internet streams back in those days and... It was the game against the Indianapolis Colts, and I believe this recently was on uh, Big Cat Country's top wins of the decade. They've been breaking that down uh, recently on their Twitter page and their Facebook page. If you haven't seen that, check it out. But uh, 
Blaine Gabbert throws like a slant route to Cecil Shorts, and he took it all the way to the house, and then the Jags ended up getting the victory over the Indianapolis Colts. I believe that was a Peyton Manning-led Indianapolis Colts team as well. Cecil Shorts was a big play machine waiting to happen every time he touched the ball. And, you know, there's something about that 84 number with wide receivers, you know, making, you know, little slant routes into big plays because Keelan Cole does that as well. Or, you know, insane catches. Or they can make something happen on the deep ball because Cecil Shorts was a great vertical threat as well. My dad also used to call him uh, Shit Your Shorts. So, you know, that's just some historical reference that really made me fall in love with Mr. Cecil Shorts. His tenure in Jacksonville wasn't that long, but he was one of the players that really made me fall in love with the Jacksonville Jaguars and one is, and was one of my first favorite players on this team. Number nine, Corey Grant. You can get off my nuts right now. <laughs> you can get off my nuts right now. I love me some Corey Grant, dude. I will die for Corey Grant. This dude... Whether he was, or he didn't really do much as a running back, but in the special teams game, whether that was being a punt returner, a kick returner, or he was a legend in fake punts. The 2017 season, you know, you'll always talk about what Blake Bortles did to, you know, just do enough to lead the Jaguars offense to the AFC championship game. You talk about Leonard Fournette and what he did in the rushing game. You talk about, obviously, that 2017 Jaguars defense. Another big thing on that 2017 Jags team was the special teams, and not just Josh Lambeau, but Corey freaking Grant, dude. They ran about three fake punts, and all of them went for big plays. Corey Grant was explosive, he was fast, he was small, and somehow he always found himself a spot on the roster. I think it was the 2018 or the 2019 season he ended up getting cut by the Jags, and I think still, right now, he would have a spot on the Jags roster, you know, as a kick returner, as a punt returner, Um, and this running back room right now isn't really too deep, per se. I think there's a lot of running backs here that, you know, fit the Jake Rudin role, but if you really kind of want another receiving back that's small or a guy that can return kicks, return punts, I still think Corey Grant kind of has a spot on this team, but Corey Grant was one of the most explosive, one of the funnest players to watch one of my favorite moments was when he did a fake punt against Baltimore in the 44 to 7 it was like a 44 to 7 or a 44 to nothing demolishing of the Baltimore Ravens in London when I believe Joe Flacco only threw for like 22 yards and the one against the Chargers as well those were my two favorite fake punts that he did and Corey Grant was one of the most exciting fun players for the Jacksonville Jaguars and is one of my top 10 favorite Jacksonville Jaguars of all time Number eight, Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew is the only current Jaguars player that is going to be on this list. And it has a little bit more of historical significance than just him playing on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, when the Jags drafted him, I was over the moon. I was happy. He was probably, him and Josh Allen, I was super hyped when the Jags drafted Josh Allen in that draft class last year. But he was the second hypest I was for any draft pick of that draft class because you know the Jags don't just go out and draft anybody from the Pacific Northwest and to see really what his story was when he came and played for Washington State my favorite college football team and to lead them to the most wins in program history it was something spectacular you know what he did for Washington State University is exactly what he's doing right now for the Jacksonville Jaguars so it's, it was kind of a personal thing why I put Gardner Minshew on this list because to see what he did for Washington State and to see him get drafted to the Jaguars, see what happened to Nick Foles, see him step in and really kind of take this community, take this whole fan base, and to really make it his own, man, he did that exact same thing for Washington State. And for me personally, you know, being a fan for now 10 years, 11 years, however long it's been, um... It, it, it feels like a piece of me lives in Gardner Minshew. I mean, that's just how it is. You know, from being where I live, I live 15 minutes away from Washington State. I go to a lot of their games, and I got to see Gardner Minshew play a lot. And when we drafted him and when he did that, you know, it kind of felt like Treve from Treve Talks is out on the field with Gardner Minshew. You know, it felt like a piece of me is on the field with Gardner Minshew. So it's it's a big deal 
with Gardner Minshew. It's not just because, you know, oh, he's going to take the Jags to the Super Bowl. You know, he's this awesome quarterback. No, you know, there's a lot of personal personal feelings, and that's what this list is, is personal feelings and, you know, who my favorite players are, you know, players that made me fall in love with the Jaguars. Obviously, you know, Gardner Minshew is one of my favorite he is, no, he's not. He's my second favorite college player of all time. My favorite college player of all time is Kellen Moore. But Gardner Minshew is my second favorite college player of all time. He's the, I've seen him play live. I've followed his career more than any college football player that I've ever watched in my entire life. And he's definitely going to have a spot on this top 10 list, whether you like it or not. Number seven, Brad Meester. Brad Meester, man, when I started watching the Jaguars, he was one of the first Jaguar players, other than another guy that we're going to talk about in a second, that spent his whole career with the Jacksonville Jaguars that I got to watch, you know, kind of play through it. You know, the whole time I was a Jags fan, at least. I didn't get to see, like, his whole career, but I got to, you know, watch him play through his whole career. And, you know, to see a guy really, you know, go through all that with the Jacksonville Jaguars and never want to leave, you know, that is a big thing. Loyalty is a big thing for me, and Brad Meester showed that, you know, for the Jags. And I'll never forget his last game. We tried throwing him a touchdown pass. It didn't work. And, you know, he had, you know, all the grit, all the grind. And to see an offensive lineman do that, especially at a young age when I was a young offensive lineman, um coming up you know playing seventh eighth grade football you know and to see a whole fan base send him off like that I remember that halftime of that Colts game his final game of his career you know he had that big send off and everything and it was it was awesome to see and he is my favorite Jacksonville Jaguar offensive lineman of all time and I think he should uh be a lot of people that are my age uh favorite offensive lineman for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think as far as, you know, all time Jaguars O lineman, you gotta go Tony Baselli number one, obviously, but number two, Brad Meester, without a question. Number six, Mercedes Lewis. I love me some Mercedes Lewis, man. I would take a bullet for Mercedes Lewis. Dude, I loved watching him play. Um, I basically got to watch his whole career play out in Jacksonville, and when the Jags cut him, man, that was one of the most upset that I have ever been for, like, how the Jaguars did a player. Like, and I've seen the Jags do some players dirty, and this is a guy that wanted to finish his career off with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and, you know, players don't just want to do that, as, as you know. You know, as being a Jags fan, you know that. And, you know, as being, you know, in the Jaguars front office, you should probably know that too. But, you know, it is what it is now. Hopefully, you know, playing for the Green Bay Packers now, maybe he can get a ring. You know, he can do something there. He, uh, catching some touchdown passes from Aaron Rodgers, he probably catches those and is like, wow, this is what catching from a good quarterback's like. This is insane. But watching him play and in that 2005 draft getting drafted with another Jaguars legend in Maurice Jones-Drew, I mean, that was probably the best first second round that the Jaguars have ever had and they drafted two all-time legends in the team's history in Mercedes Lewis and uh, Maurice Jones Drew seeing him you know develop into a fan favorite into the best tight end that the Jaguars have ever had um, I remember watching that 27 it was the Baltimore Ravens game again um, in London and when he caught three touchdown passes, I remember the whole community, the whole fan base was so excited for Mercedes Lewis, like a 14-year vet at the time, seeing him catch those three touchdown passes in London, you know, in 2017, that was awesome. And, you know, it, it almost felt like, you know, I wanted the Jags to win that Super Bowl more kind of to get Mercedes Lewis that Super Bowl ring than anything else because he really really deserved it after all he really had been through with the Jacksonville Jaguars and he is one of my all-time favorites and he is definitely a big reason on why I fell in love with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Number five, Paul Pazlesny. This guy came into the Jacksonville Jaguars and really kind of just bled for the community. He was a big leader he led the team in tackles every year and just sat down did his job and you look at that 2017 Jags team and Telvin Smith, man, I, I still, I, I got to find that video again. I got to find that video of Telvin Smith talking about Puzz before he retired because 
Man, I, I, I could tear up watching that, man, because that is just how everybody in that locker room felt about Paul Pozlesny, a true leader in that locker room. Everybody loved him. Everybody wanted the best for him, and everybody wanted him to kind of get that Super Bowl ring in 2017 as well. It was almost kind of the same thing for Mercedes Lewis. Um, you can't say enough good words about the guy. You wanted him to perform, even when he was doing bad. I mean, there was times that, I mean, you, you can look through my Twitter, and I'm sure, like, you scroll far enough to 2017 2016 during a Jags game and I've you know said some not so nice words about Paul Pozlesny because of what he would do in the run game but you know as far as a as a man as a guy for the Jacksonville Jaguars I loved Paul Pozlesny and I will never not say I didn't and he is you know what I hope Joe Schobert's gonna be you know just a leader just a guy that's gonna be in the middle holding things down and you know hopefully be the next Paul Pozlesny for us a locker room leader, a guy that the people look up to. And Paul Bozlesny, man, you're one of the big reasons I fell in love with this team. Number four, Rasheen Mathis. Rasheen Mathis, dude. I loved Rasheen Mathis so much. Rasheen Mathis was probably my first ever favorite Jacksonville Jaguar player when I was a kid that I named my cat Mathis. I, we got a cat and I named it Mathis. There's a point, like, every year I would have, like, a character in Madden, and I would, like, the last name would be Mathis. Like, I'd want to name my kid Mathis. Like, I, I loved Rasheen Mathis so much. I have a Rasheen Mathis jersey. I think Colch has it now, but, you know, I had a youth Rasheen Mathis jersey. Either Colch has it or it's on my jersey wall, but Rasheen Mathis, man, I can't say enough. Um, like I said, one of my first games I ever watched was that playoff game against Pittsburgh, and, you know, he got that interception against Big Ben, which, you know, a lot of people talk about that, David Garrard run, which was obviously the big play in that game, but I mean, it doesn't happen if Rasheen Mathis doesn't get that interception, and it's huge. You know, he was the best corner in Jacksonville Jaguar history at Jalen Ramsey. He was. I mean, that's my opinion. I think he was the best corner in Jaguar history, and he was there, and he did a lot, and he ended up going to Detroit, and he ended up holding things down in Detroit as well. I mean, he was an all-around great corner. Doesn't get a lot of respect around the league. Not a lot of people talk about him. But, uh, you know, he is one of those guys that is a great player, but not a lot of people talk about. And was my first favorite player in Jaguar history. Um, I'm not going to say he was my all-time favorite because there's obviously three more players I would say that made me fall in love with the team more. But he definitely, in my younger years, had a big impact on me as a person and me as a fan of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Number three, Calais Campbell. Calais Campbell was the biggest, most impactful free agent signing that the Jacksonville Jaguars ever made. And he didn't play here for, you know, 10 years, 20 years, whatever. But every time he stepped on that field, he gave it his all. And he was a leader, and everybody looked up to him, and he produced, and he did everything. You know, he took pride in what he did on that field. And, you know, when he was out there, you expected and you knew that he was going to be the best player on that field. And that was something, you know, for years you didn't really get that from anybody on the Jaguars. You know, you didn't know, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, from 2011 till about 2016, I mean, who could you, besides Paul Pozlesny, I mean, who did you really know when they stepped out there where you'd be like, oh, you know, every single snap, this guy's going to be the best player on the field, especially on that defensive line. I mean, you had random years where, like, guys like Andre Branch would, like, be pretty solid, but nobody really on that D-line was, like, special enough where you'd be like, yes, this is a guy that's going to get us double-digit sacks every year. You know, he's going to do great. You know, you never really had that. Calais Campbell came in as a free agent and was a dog he came in and did everything that you wanted him to and more and he Walter Payton man of the year great guy off the field and you know I think that's why so many of us love him so much not only like his on the field production but so much that he does off the field as well and I think without a doubt he is one of my favorite Jacksonville Jaguar players of all time number two Blake Bortles I was the biggest Blake Bortles defender of all time, and if I did not put him where I actually should have in my, like, where I know he should be, 
I would be straight up lying to you guys. Blake Bortles, number two, favorite Jaguar player of all time. Let's talk about it. Blake Bortles, man, I loved you. There were so many downs, but so many ups. And just who he was, man. The regular guy persona of Blake Bortles is why so many people fell in love with this guy. I mean, how many people, and I don't even care. Like, I know now we can all laugh about how we defended Blake Bortles and how, you know, he was actually not a great quarterback. He was bad, whatever. And, you know, you can comment below like, oh, my God, Treeb lost all this credibility. Dude, tell me there weren't most of you that were on here telling everybody that Blake Bortles was the man, Blake Bortles was going to do it, Blake Bortles was going to take us to the Super Bowl. A lot of you were. You, A lot of y'all were in the same position I was defending Blake Bortles day in, day out. And I, I would be lying to you if I didn't say that Blake Bortles was... You know, probably, like, my favorite modern-day Jaguar player of all time. He is. Because, I mean, for who he was as a player, for who he was as a guy, I mean, it's just, it was so out of nowhere. It was so unexpected. I didn't even expect the Jags to draft him. I'll never forget when the Jags drafted him. I was on my way to my first-ever high school football meeting. Ever. I was, like, a freshman in high school. Freshman or sophomore in high school, and... I was on my way to that, and I was about to watch who the Jaguars were going to draft, and it was Blake Bortles, and I was like, what? Wow. He drafted a quarterback, and, you know, allegedly he was supposed to be the best guy in the draft, and, you know, through some dark times, and, you know, you go into 2017, it's like make or break for Bortles. This defense carries him on his back, on their back, and he goes in and goes to the AFC Championship game, and in that AFC Championship game, man, he plays well and he gets paid and you know it wasn't the best contract ever handed out to a quarterback no 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 it was not but that guy man that is my guy that is my guy I have a whole video dedicated to why he's the best quarterback in Jacksonville Jaguar history that I never deleted because that's how like die hard of a Blake Bortles defender that I really was and I really am I love Blake Bortles he is without a doubt my second favorite Jaguar player of all time and coming in at number one is Maurice Jones-Drew. I mean, is it, it wasn't going to be anybody else. I mean, everybody, everybody my age that started becoming a Jags fan. I mean, you're, if your number one isn't Maurice Jones-Drew, I mean, who is it? Besides Blake Portals. I mean, yeah, it was it going to be? Like, Maurice Jones-Drew, man, that was, that was the only reason you could have been a Jags fan back then. Because MJD, man, he did it all from the kick return, from the punt return, when they first drafted him, winning a rushing title. He was the bowling ball. I mean, he is what made it all right to be a Jags fan, despite the team being, you know, less than ac adequate, less than good. You know, this was the guy that made it all right to root for the Jags. And, you know, through all the bad times, he stuck around. He stuck around till he couldn't anymore, and he went to go play for Oakland, which is all right. Because, I mean, you can only stick around and play for the Jags for so long without it being too much for you. Which I completely, completely understand. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't fucking stick around with this team for that long either, especially when I'm a GOAT like Maurice Jones-Drew. But this is a guy that is, you know, without a doubt, if you didn't have Fred Taylor on this team, the best running back in Jaguars history, this is a guy that, you know, is going to be a really really good guy on NFL Network for a long time, a guy that's always going to be defending the Jags for a long time. This is a guy that is always going to be people's favorite player for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, I don't really need to even sit here and explain it. I felt like, you know, with a lot of these guys, you know, I kind of had to sit here and tell you why, you know, they're on this list. But with Maurice Jones-Drew, I mean, is there really any explanation that needs to be had with him? He definitely is, without a doubt, my favorite Jaguar player of all time. And if he's not in at least your top three, no matter what era of Jaguar football that you watched, are you even really a real fan? I don't know. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that was my top 10 favorite Jaguar players of all time. And that was my top 10 Jaguar players of all time. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. I'll respond to every single one of them. Make sure you check all the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram at Trey Fawn Pixley. Make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Click that bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.